guys, welcome to my Ocean One channel. I just want to do a real quick opening for the solar array today. I've been working on testing the solar panel on the ocean for well, well, almost two weeks now. But uh, I've learned a lot and I'm going to play some videos here. And I have just a handful of videos that are out of order. I don't know exactly. I uh, had so many videos when, when I ended up putting it together, ended up putting it together just a little bit uh, out of order. But I think everything will make sense. So what I would encourage you to do is watch the videos. And then at the end, I'm simply going to give my final thoughts and wrap everything up nice and tidy. So there we go. Let's jump right into it. I pulled the ocean around so it would actually get some morning sun here. Now, keep in mind, that is east. So the sun has to cross those trees, and this time of the year it really doesn't cross till right in there. And you can see where the sun is now, so the sun is shining on the ocean, but uh, I still wouldn't have sun in the front. So I pulled it around in the back to do this experiment for today. And so that is east. You can see I have a pretty high tree line there. So in the winter time I barely get any sun crossing that, it just takes a while. And over here is west. That's where the sun's going to set. So I'm not going to get the evening sun, nor am I going to get the morning sun. And then, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. So I wanted to pull this out here. I've been doing an experiment all week with the ocean. And I'm going to teach you guys what I have learned about the solar array on the ocean. So I'm going to leave this parked here all day. And then this evening, I'll come out and let you guys know how we did. And I'll do a video update on all of this so you'll understand how everything went. All right, guys, just trying to give you a good perspective here. Uh, that's my dog. That's my house. So this is where I live in Kentucky. Hey guys, quick video for you today. I wanted to do a test over the solar panel on the Fisker Ocean and I wanted to walk outside and show you the setup, so I'll flip the camera around and do that. Okay, I have turned around, so uh, you can see this now. Uh, I have turned around, so let's see. Uh, yeah, that did help, 51%. Uh, so I have a little bit better angle on the solar panel, so 51%. Lifetime here. 94.7, 30 kilowatt hours. Okay. So, 287, 79%. That is our starting point. I'm going to change that to 85. Just, that shouldn't make any difference at all with the solar panel, but I'm going to do it anyway. 287, 287, 79%. All right, let's get out. Let's leave it here all day. I'll lose the sun later this evening. But let's see how we do. All right, guys, experiment in motion. It is Sunday morning. It's 926. It's 63 degrees. And I have uh, driven my ocean around to where I can actually get the sun. I just pulled it out of the garage. I'm going to do an experiment all day here. Um, I, I never get the early morning sun. I never get the evening sun. Uh, up there is my solar array. I always park in the garage. So this is an experiment. To see how things go. Uh, I got 287 miles at 79%. I'm going to put it on 30 second standby time to try to reduce mileage. I, mean, I don't mean mileage, I mean uh, energy. And let's see, this says 287. That says 287. 79%. 79%. My fan up here, don't know if you can hear that, it's running. Uh, that started running almost non-stop since uh, I got 2.0 installed. Maybe the third update, whenever I get that, will solve that. Solar Sky Production, right here. Uh, we are at 44%. I don't have the best angle on the solar roof ever was. I'd probably do better if I backed in here. Actually, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try backing in. 44%. Let's see if we change that. For the heck of it, I wanted to walk around and show you the front. You can see here, you know, even if I had pulled the car out of where I normally park it, I normally park it right in here. 
you know, even if I had pulled the ocean out, um, I wouldn't be getting any early morning sun at all. So, you know, here the sun's going to have to cross those trees. Now, it does pretty good in the, in the peak of summer. But really, in the winter, you know, the sun is just too shallow to get over those trees. So, I really only get the sun in the evening between those two parts for, you know, the evening sun. Anyway, just uh, letting you know the, the circumstances here. So, that's it. Alright guys, it is Sunday. It's 5.20 and I'm about ready to take my daughter back to college. So, this experiment is about to end. And if you look over here, I don't have much uh, evening sun left where I've parked it. So this is going to be roughly eight hours in the sun. Just, just I mean, right now, just a hair shy of eight hours in the sun. But I'm going to walk back here and kind of give you an angle on what's happening, of course. Uh, the shade is starting to creep over. And if you look over there, that's actually why I took those trees out. Uh, that section over there, I took that section out when I did my solar array. So I'd get about an extra 30 minutes of the sun in the evenings. There's actually three arrays back there, but that's a horrible angle to see those. But I'm going to hop in the ocean and see how we did. And then I'm going to talk about everything that I did this week and everything that I learned about the solar panel, particularly on the ocean here. So you can see that the, the panel, you know, it's dusty, it's dirty, um, the panel has not been cleaned all week, and of course that was intentional, so, you know, you can see my car's dirty, and I'm going to go in and get my key fob and get in it and start it, and we'll go from there. Alright, I, I went in and got my key fob, Let's see how we did. We're going to get a really slow boot up here because that's what I put it in. Okay, we started with 287 and 79%, and right now we see 285 and 79%. So, according to that, we lost two miles. Right? Okay, that's what I wrote down. 287, 79%. 285, 79%. Okay, now, let's go over here. Go to energy. Yeah, we were on the 32nd, so let's go here. And I'm burning up in here. Okay, so that says 285 and 79%. Let's see what this says. Solar Sky is operating at 37%, and let's go to our lifetime. Lifetime says 97.3 miles in 31 kilowatt hours. Okay, let's compare that. I'm going to put this right there. When I started this morning, we had 94.7 in 30 kilowatt hours. And now it says 97.3 in 31 kilowatt hours. Which is what? Three miles, right? We added three miles. Yeah. Okay, we added a full kilowatt hour. We added three miles according to this. Yet, we dropped two miles to 285. So, is that parasitic draw? Is that just an anomaly in the software where it counts up here and doesn't reflect it over there? But we still lost range just sitting here over the course of the day uh, that's that's pretty interesting actually what to make of that all right guys it's monday morning i have 298 miles i'm at 82 percent it is 7 36 april the 29th i'm going to track my solar this week so the display says 298 at 82%. Lifetime says 97.4 in 31 kilowatt hours. So right there. 
and solar production rate <clears throat> is zero because the sun's just now cresting over the hill. All right, that's our starting point. Not sure, did I show the paper that I have that written down? If I didn't, there it is. Oh, and one more thing. My ADAS fan, don't know if you can hear that or not. Since I got the first two parts of 2.0, that thing seems to never stop running. Uh, I do not have the third part of 2.0, so maybe that stops it, maybe that doesn't, I'm not really sure. All right, so that's our starting point. There we are. Today, I'm going to leave this in the default setting of 24 hours. So there we are, the standby time. I am going to leave that in 24 hours today. Uh, I'm going to do an experiment this week and just see how it goes. I did decide to move the car ever so slightly, so I just backed it out and I put it where I thought it might get a little more sun today. Uh, none of the numbers changed, so just giving you an update on that. Check the car, see how we're doing. Now remember our starting point was 298 at 82%. And that was what, roughly 7.30 this morning, give or take slightly. Okay, so we've lost two miles of range sitting here. According to that, 82%. Current solar, 49%. 97.6. Don't remember, may have added like 0.2 miles, not sure. But uh, anyway, that's where we are at the moment. I'm not gonna write anything down. Uh, I think it's too early to write anything down. 958, 958, all right, 296. All right, we'll check back in later. Guys, this is to help me figure out a few things about parasitic loss after I've got part two of 2.0. I do not have the third part yet, so I wanna be very clear on that. I have 289 miles, I'm at 80%, I just got home. It's 326 and it's Tuesday. Now my plan is to check this about 9 or 10 o'clock tonight and see if I've lost any range or if I've lost any percentage. Um, I'm not going to plug it up. I'm just going to leave it exactly like this, but I am in the garage. So, you know, I am parked here and I'm going to stay here. So I want to see what happens over the next about eight hours uh, to see if I have any parasitic loss because I've been doing a lot of tests for the solar panel and I want to see how that plays out. <clears throat> so this really doesn't have anything to do with anything. Of course, you can see I'm in the garage um, and I've generated, since I've owned the car, I've generated 101 miles and 32 kilowatt hours. But this test is to see if I lose anything just sitting here. All right, guys, let's see what happens here. It's 917. Let me start it up. 287 miles and 79%. And I don't remember my starting point. Uh, the reason that I'm doing this video is what's been happening to me at work is... Don't you hear that just kick on? Since I got 2.0, that thing's been running pretty much constantly when I'm, when I'm inside the vehicle. <laughs> turn the vehicle on and I never done that before prior to 2.0 uh, what's been happening to me at work is I've been doing several tests on the solar panel and even though I am clearly producing miles generally I'm producing about three miles a day is just a general rule and I'll explain all that in another piece of this video <clears throat> I'm losing I typically never lose any percentage while I'm at work. You know, my eight hours at work, I typically never lose any percentage. But I have been losing a few miles, even though it's sitting in the sun. So the reason I'm doing this video, which, you know, the ocean's been sitting here in the garage for basically six hours, I'm curious if I lost any miles while I've been sitting in the garage. So I'll have to go back and watch my starting point 
to see if I actually lost any miles here or and lost any percentage. So that's what I'm going to do and then I'm going to put everything together for you. Mostly with my thoughts because I don't want to bore you to death with, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I thought it would be better just to show a quick example and then walk you through all my thoughts because I have learned quite a bit doing this. Okay, here's my final thoughts on the solar panel. And I want to preface this by stating that I never get the early morning sun. I never get the late evening sun. I'm not the best case scenario for getting... Uh, sun on the ocean. But uh, having said that, I found this to be very fun. I, I love stuff like this. I mean, I built my own solar array, so I, I get a kick out of this stuff. Now, what I did notice is that if you open the solar sky, you're going to lose about 30% on your production. So say it's running at 70%, poof, it's going to drop to 30% just because you have it open. And that makes sense because, you know, you're covering up the back solar panel. Uh, another thing that I learned was if you're driving and you drive into the shade or you drive into or under a a, uh, a pass, you know, like an overpass, like a bridge above you, I mean, even though you were under that for a fraction of a second, you know, like poof, poof, you know, you're under it and you're gone, you know, like driving in the rain, you know, how to stop raining under those things because, you know, the rain's not hitting your car. Um, what will happen is, I mean, it will instantly drop to zero, like poof, it will instantly go to zero. But then it takes usually six to eight seconds, generally around seven seconds, before you will see the production come back up, which I actually found was weird. Um, you know, it will drop so fast, like poof, zero. But then you need six, seven, eight seconds to get it back up. Now, another thing that I had was I had very long periods of time where I was getting plenty of sun, but it still showed zero production. And most of the time, what I actually had to do was I actually had to restart the car for it to show that production. So is it still banking that production? I'm sure the solar panel is still producing. My best guess is there, you know, there's a mild software hiccup to where sometimes it's just not reading the solar production. You know the solar panel's producing. Nothing's going to stop that solar panel from producing or it shouldn't. But it's not reading it in the sense, you know, I drove from work. I drove all the way home from work one day, and it showed zero production. I got home, I got out, I locked the car, I got back in it, I started back up, and poof, you know, it was like 65%. I mean, you know, I knew I had plenty of sun on it, but it wasn't reading it. And um, there was never a single time throughout this whole test that I was able to add miles during the day. Not, not a single time, you know turn it off with 270 and I never started the car where I had 271 or 273. Uh, basically I did stay even a couple times but most of the time I dropped. I dropped you know just a mile or two most of the time and I think this is my best guess. Now let me kind of preface this. Before I got 2.0 my ADAS fan never ran. It was never an issue. It would come on occasionally and go right back off. Okay. But since I've gotten the first two parts of 2.0, my fan runs just about 24-7. Um, like last night, I came in, I pulled it in the garage, I left the windows down to do a test, I plugged it up to let it charge, and I checked it before I went to bed. That was, you know, like 10.30 last night, and that fan was still going wide open. You know, I was home like 3.30, 4 o'clock, and I checked it, and at 10 o'clock, 10.30 that night, you know, that fan was still was still running. Now, when I went out this morning to start the car, it had gone off overnight. So what I think has actually happened for me in particular is I'm having about the same amount of parasitic loss as I am gaining from the solar panel. So, you know, they're, they're basically kind of fighting each other and kind of canceling each other out. Now, interestingly, before I got 2.0, my parasitic loss was usually just 1%. I did several videos over this. You know, I'd go 12 hours, 14 hours, and sometimes I wouldn't drop any, and sometimes I would drop 1%. But since I've gotten the 2.0 update, I personally seem to have more parasitic loss 
than I did prior to 2.0, which is not common. That's probably not what's happening with most people. I think most people went from, you know, losing three, four, five percent to one percent or less than one percent. And I've talked to plenty of people to back this up. So, you know, there, there is the, there is scientific evidence for this. So I learned another thing, too, is that just that with the way the car is shaped, the way the ocean is shaped, Unless the sun is, you know, pretty much 90 degrees above you, you are better off in every way to have the back of the car facing the sun. It's just the way the car is shaped, so you get a little bit of a better angle. If you're really trying to, you know, get every watt that you could out of the solar panel, it's even better to pull the car up on a little incline, a little bank with the back toward the sun. Now, what I found was if you have the back toward the sun, Generally speaking, you're going to get about 10% more out of the solar panel as if you have the front facing the sun. Now, when the sun is directly overhead, there's virtually no difference at all. But, you know, if the sun is at any angle away from your car, you're better off to have the back toward the sun. So I found this experiment very interesting. I have reached out to Fisker to see if they're going to tell me the wattage of the panel. I'm curious if I'm going to know that. If I, if I find that out, I will tack that on right to the end of this video. I'm about ready to wrap all of this up. And so, hope you found this helpful. Hope you appreciated it. And, you know, I think this is a great starting point because you can clearly see, since I've had the ocean, and I'm not a great example here, I've added over 100 miles of real driving. Now, what I found through this experiment was it's no problem at all. If you have sun, and you're nine hours in the sun, it's no problem at all to add three or four miles a day. Zero problems at all. Now, if you were to get the early morning sun and the late evening sun, I think getting five or six miles a day is very, very doable. Absolutely doable. You know, if you live in Arizona or California or Florida, and you know, you're getting that early morning sun, that late evening sun, and you're just out in the sun, um, Five or six miles a day is not, not a problem at all. Now, personally, I'm going to have to deal with the parasitic loss until that gets solved. But uh, <clears throat> I'm hoping that uh, maybe the third update of 2.0. Now, I have a friend that lives in Chicago, you know, lives in Illinois. And his fan was running 24-7. And the, his 2.0 update caused the fan to stop. I've talked to other people that have reached out to Fisker. And Fisker says that they are aware of certain people, like myself, that the ADES fan is just running, you know, and they, they're saying that that's a software hiccup and they're going to address that with the software update. So I've not been personally told anything personally from Fisker. This is just other people that have talked to Fisker. So again, I hope you found this helpful. Hope you found it interesting. And it's nice to get free miles, you know, it's nice to get sunshine miles. I think the ocean is proof of concept to show that putting solar panels on a car is indeed beneficial and I think you know we could get creative you know and have solar panels on the side you know we, we could we could find various ways to do that you know there's always a trade-off you know structure strength uh, cost everything but I found this very helpful and I found it uh, a great experiment to do because I love doing this stuff I mean I just you know I built my own solar array in the back of the house so I found this super, 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 golly, I can't talk today. Uh, super entertaining to do this. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and until next time.